What's going on guys? I got a video for you. Get excited. All right. A lot of you out there um, want to have a uh, voltmeter to show what your battery is doing, whether it's just for show or uh, you actually pay attention to it is kind of up to you. Uh, mine's a little half and half. Um, nobody can really see it over here. And I'll show you real quick. That's the display. I know it looks rough. Don't give me crap for it. I'm working on it. Um, right now it's just sitting there uh, in place, so it's not done, so don't give me a hard time. Anyways, I'm going to show you uh, how to wire a voltmeter with a relay so it'll turn on um, pretty much with your amp, which is what you want it to do because if your amp turns on, it's because your head unit turned on because you turned your car on, and it'll go off when everything else goes off. So. First things first, uh, you got to find a place for it. Mine, I looked all over my car, couldn't find too many good areas that I really wanted it to. Um, I could have done it maybe somewhere right there, but I don't really want to mess with these uh, just because I haven't touched them yet and they look all right the way they are. So, since I already cut up this trim piece uh, to fit my head unit in, and you can see, it, wow, it shows up really good on video. You can't really see how rough this is. I think it's just because of the lights going on. Anyways, that's a different video. Um, I decided I would just cut apart my dash a little bit more and put it in right there. Now, um, finding the place in your vehicle might be easy or hard. It just kind of depends. Um, just make sure it's in a spot that it's not going to be distracting and that you're going to be able to see it and be happy with it. That's the main thing. So, um, my voltmeter is just a little display. You see a lot of people on YouTube with a... Uh, Stinger voltmeter. A lot of them uh, plug into this uh, cigarette lighter or power adapter or whatever you want to call it. Mine didn't. Mine came with a positive and negative part. Fires are loose up there. This is not on, which is good because it would drain your battery. And it's not going to drain it to the point where you're not going to be able to turn your car on, but it's just, it's not great to have that stress on your battery all the time. So, in order to, here it is, in order to uh, kind of change that without actually putting a physical uh, on-off switch on it, what you can do is get a relay. Now they come in different shapes, sizes, things like that. And guys at uh, Enphase, which I'll put a uh, little thing right here that tells you a little bit about Enphase, where they were nice enough to draw me up a little uh, diagram. Now, I'm not going to say who drew this, just in case he gets embarrassed of his art skills, but he's a very good guy. Um, anything from Enphase, they really know their stuff, so go to Enphase. So, I'm just going to give you a quick overview, and uh, you can kind of see here. Let me put this up against my steering wheel so I can point out some things for you. From the voltmeter, you got your positive and negative, and uh, these different lines right here, those correspond to what's on here. So if you can kind of understand this top one goes up there, this middle one right there, left, right, bottom, and uh, you can kind of see it there. So on this, that's going to be the power wire from the 12 volt, which is the battery. We've got the voltmeter here. The positive is going to go down there. The negative is going to go into here, and from here, it's going to go out to the ground, which is the positive and negative from my battery. And then uh, from the remote that turns on your uh, amp from your head unit, that's going to be hooked up in there. You can kind of see back and forth like that. So I got my uh, trim pieces off. As you can see, that's the uh, dashboard that, or that's the uh, trim piece that I've cut up so many times that it's uh, pretty haggard looking. Here's the. Uh, trim pieces for around here. Just give you guys a little look and see what it looks like back here. Um, there's the uh, positive and negative for my voltmeter and it is just a display um, which is perfect for me. Sorry if it's a little shaky. You can kind of see it right there. Um, that's the display. There's the uh, chip behind it. Um, all of this actually goes into a housing that I have um, mounted onto the back. So the housing's right there. The tape I have to take off. It's not holding it in place or anything. It was uh, it was just there to uh, mount it 
uh, temperamental or temper. Bleh, I can't talk. Uh, just to mount it so that I could get everything in place. So that tape's not doing anything. Anyways, we got the display right there, and uh, I'm going to find the remote wire. Got some extra speaker wire right here that's remote from something else. Um, if you have trouble remembering what goes where and uh, what's positive and negative, make sure that you mark yours. Um, I'm pretty good at remembering what's what on mine, and I always test it before. Um, you know, you tug on one wire or you tug on the other wire and make sure everything is all right. So if you have problems with that, make sure to label yours. Uh, for me, I'm all right. So I'm going to find my remote wire, which is another blue wire. And it's the one that goes back to my amp. Mine is underneath right there. You can kind of see a little blue wire. Um, so I'm going to cut it and I'm going to run another wire up here so we're going to have positive, negative, and remote and then we're going to uh, hook all of these up once the camera focuses onto this relay using these uh, little things right here which are nice they just plug right in and uh, they stay there nice and secure all right, like I showed you before, um, my remote wire is underneath my dash down here, and uh, I'm in an uncomfortable spot, which is why I'm moving so much. All right, that's better. All right, so I clipped it. Um, what I'm going to do is use this butt connector and put one end in there, another end in the uh, opposite side, along with one other end over here, so that I can kind of uh, splice it and uh, move it up through the dashboard up over here. Um, when you're doing all this, if you're ever kind of worried about messing things up, make sure that you go to your local uh, car audio dealer and ask them what's going on. Ask them if they can help so uh, you don't mess up your good investment. Um, but uh, if you feel comfortable, go for it. So I'm going to do that real quick and I'll show you right after I'm done. What all right, got one of them on. Um, now that that's on, in case I didn't explain it better earlier, um, this is going to go in, and that's going to go on the same side. Just going to twist them together and then crimp it. All right, that's crimped, and it's together. Um, we're going to start my car and make sure that everything's still working. Um, I do this periodically throughout installs just to make sure that I didn't mess one thing up because it kind of gives me a better idea of what could have gone wrong. Um, it's something I highly suggest to any of you guys that are doing it. Um, it's just a kind of a safety type of thing so that you can keep track of what's happening. So turning that on, head units on just fine go back here and I'm gonna make sure gotta see that light all right the amp's still working so that means that I didn't clip anything that wasn't supposed to be clipped and everything's connected just fine all right next thing to do is to fish this remote wire up through your dashboard and make sure everything's secure and not in the way make sure it's not rubbing up against anything or anything dangerous like that so for me it's easy. I'm just going to have to uh, put it up through there. Um, I don't know if you can see down there, but you can kind of see some light underneath there. That's where it's going to come through. Now, I secure everything with uh, uh, those zip ties just to make sure nothing rattles around. And you probably should, too. It's just, uh, just a good thing to do to keep everything safe and uh, nice and clean looking. So I'm going to run it through real quick and something I've learned from a lot of experience is uh, I'd rather have a wire too long than too short. I can't even count the number of times that I've had a wire that's like two or three inches too short and I've had to redo everything. So with this one, this uh, just kind of scrap piece of wire, I didn't cut anything yet. Um, I just ran the entire thing through and obviously it's way, way too long, but I'd rather have it too long than be too short. So this is ran through. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our diagram that Enphase gave me. And uh, it's never a bad thing to uh, to go to your local shop and ask questions. That's how everybody learns, and that's how we uh, how we uh, do the best installs is from learning from the best. So, what we're gonna do is grab our our missing relay. There it is. Grab our relay and uh, kind of just study it for a little bit. 
making sure that everything looks like uh, you're going to be able to do it. Then uh, we're just going to start clipping wires and putting everything together. And I'll All right, so the part that you probably clicked this clip for, how to really wire it. Um, this is this is as easy as I'm going to be able to explain it because I'm pretty new to relays, but uh, I, I think I know enough to uh, be able to show you guys and have you guys understand it. Here's the voltmeter, just this little thing. You can see how big it is compared to my thumb, so pretty little. Here's the relay. Here's the uh, little plastic thing. See if I can get a close-up on them. I don't know if it's going to focus or not. Anyways, these little cast of, uh, plastic caps are going to be what we uh, put on there. And we got our remote wire that's uh, hanging down right over there. All right, that one is on. Um, the uh, little cap is on it. So we got the positive from the uh, power supply. It's going on the top. Then we've got this voltmeter, which is right there. The positive from that is going to be going on this bottom one, which is right there. The negative from the voltmeter is going to be going to the side one. And also connected is going to be from the ground from the uh, power supply, which is that one that doesn't have the cap on it yet. That's the negative from the power supply. Then the remote from the amp, which is this one that you guys just saw me string through, this one is going to be going on the side right there. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when everything's plugged in and ready, and uh, see you in a second. All right, there you have it. This is what it should look like when you're all done. I hope this has been a good video for you guys, and uh, just to show you that everything works just fine, um, I'm going to put all this, uh, all the trim panels back together and uh, make it look nice, and then we're going to turn it on, and I'll show you that everything works just fine and just how I told you. All right, guys, everything's put back on. Almost. <laughs> this is a little out of place. Anyways, everything's put back on. Um, trim panel's back on. So, just like I told you, everything should come on once I turn this key. So, I'm going to turn that on. Just wait for this. There it is. There's the head unit. And I can hear the fan going for the amp, so you're just going to have to take my word. So, that's pretty much how you install a voltmeter using a relay so everything turns on when you want it to. And you don't need an ugly little switch down here that you have to press or anything like that. So, there you go. Sitting at 12.1. Uh, Let's see what it is after I start it back up. Okay, turn off for a second and I'll turn back on with everything else. 13.7 seems where it's sitting right now and that's without any gas or anything like that so thanks for watching i hope this helped if you have any questions at all if you want me to email you a picture or anything like that just let me know and i'll send it to you thanks for watching